Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have, we, have, we have finished solving almost all the math problems from this book. If there is any problem at all that gives you trouble and if you wish to watch the solution to it, you will find the solutions to almost all the problems from this book from day number 251 through 400. From 251 through 400. This book, the second edition, happens to contain exactly the same problems in most cases and appearing on exactly the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are finished doing all the problems from this book. In the event that you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find all the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. From day number 1 through 250. Original solutions tend to be a little bit lengthier. They tend to be a little bit more in depth. Right now, we are in the process of solving some quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions, as you know, are a very important part of the exam. They are a big chunk of the exam. They have not gone away. Unfortunately for us, the newer books do not provide us with enough practice problem for quantitative comparison questions. For that reason, from day number 401, we began solving quantitative comparison questions out of this book. This book contains seven exams. Each exam has 30 questions for a total of 210 quantitative comparison questions. Today is our very last day in the series, day number 470, and we are on page number 375. Please turn to it. 375, problem number 14, the penultimate problem of the exam, the penultimate problem of our series on the very last day. Problem number 14, when it appeared in the real exam, only about 39% of the people had luck with it, about three-fifths of the people missed it. Here's what the problem says. We are told that we have two quantities, R and T. And we are told that R times T is a positive quantity. We are told that their product is positive. What we are being asked to compare is R, uh, 3 over R plus 4 over T versus 3T plus 4R over R plus T. R plus T. One more time. What we are being asked to compare is 3 over R plus 4 over T versus 3T plus 4R over R plus T. I am going to give you 5 seconds to be able to pause and unpause the video. As always, do the problem yourself first. Once you have finished solving it yourself, then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together in a few seconds time. Okay? Here we go. Well, here we go. First thing we want to do is, first thing we want to do is, if you look at this quantity here in column A, we are dealing with two fractions. We are dealing with these two fractions. Let's combine these two fractions together so that it's easier to deal with. Let's see what happens. If we combine these two fractions, the common denominator is going to be r times t, r times t, and on the top we'll end up with 3 times t, 3 times t, plus 4 times r, 4 times r. In the other column we have 3 times t plus 4 times r over r plus t. What's the very first thing we notice? The very first thing we notice now is the numerator is the same. And the numerator in both cases is the same. It no longer plays any role. If you were to divide this column by 3t plus 4r and divide this column by 3t plus 4r, this numerator drops out. It drops out. Essentially, what we are being asked to compare are these quantity 1 over r plus t versus 1 over rather 1 over r times t versus 1 over r plus t 1 over r times t versus 1 over r plus t let's see what we can do let's do it on the top here so that we can see it easily 1 over r times t versus 1 over r plus t 1 over r plus t. Now that, now that we have presented the problem in this fashion, are you able to see immediately what's going on? Are you able to see something? Does something click? What's going on here is this. It's a very simple scenario. It's a very simple situation. What we're dealing with is the fact that if, what we're dealing with is the fact that if 
if they are both if they are if they are both if they are both two if both R and T is going to be two the answer is going to be C if it turns out if it turns out if they are if they are not if they are not both they have to be both if they are not both two the answer is not going to be C the answer is not going to be C if they are both C the answer is going to be C if they are not both C or rather if they are both two if they are both two the answer is going to be C if they are not both two the answer is going to be something other than C what that something other than C happens to be is no interest to us what, in, what, is, what interests us is the fact that in this scenario the two quantities are going to be equal in this scenario they are not going to be equal and therefore the answer is D that's it we are done the answer to this question is D and why is that the case and when they are both two why is the case when they are both two the answer is C it's very simple it's very simple because we are comparing the product of two numbers versus the sum of these two numbers but the only time the product of two number equals the sum of two numbers is when they are both two. One over one over one over two times two is equal to is equal to one over two plus two. The only other time the only other time where the product of two number also happens to be equal to the sum of the two number is when they are both zero. But they have ruled that out. They have ruled that out because by telling us that r times t is positive, they ruled out the, the, the situations where both r and t may be zero. If r and t, if they were both also allowed to be zero, that will be the other time. But that they have ruled out or simply because we can end up with a zero at the bottom. We can end up with the infinity on the, on the, in the, the, the product in the two columns are going to be infinity, which, which of course uh, destroys the whole problem. You cannot go around comparing infinity versus infinity. You understand? It doesn't work that way. So that's why they, 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 they took out that complication. And if, if, as long as their product is equal to, is positive, the only other time where their sum is equal to, where their sum is going to be equal to their product is when they are both two. If they are not both two, if they are not both two, it doesn't matter what they are. If they are not both two, for example, for example, if one happens to be two and the other one happens to be three, then we find out that 1 over 2 times 3 is not the same as 1 over 2 plus 3. 1 over 2 times 3 is 1 sixth, and this is 1 fifth. I'm making it too silly now. 1 sixth, of course, 1 sixth, of course, does not equal 1 fifth. So here the answer is C, here the answer is not C, and therefore the answer is D. Number 15, the very last one. The very last problem. Number 15 is a geometry question. The very last problem in the exam, the very last problem in our series, the very last problem of the very last exam. There are seven exams, so this is the last one. If you have not been watching the videos from day number 401 through 470, it's a very good idea to practice as many questions as you can. You don't have to do all 70 of them, but do as many as you can, because quantitative comparison questions are very tricky. They are very tricky only because this is not something that we are used to in our school years when we were little boys and girls. In our school years, we do not come, we never came across this kind of beast quantitative comparison questions, and therefore we are not used to them. We are not used to thinking in the manner that we are expected to think because there are twists and turns. The problems themselves are not difficult. The math that is involved in these questions are not. The math is not complicated. It's the kind of thinking that is required. And that's, that requires practice, that requires some getting used to. And the only way we can get used to something is through practice, obviously. I know I'm pointing out the bloody obvious now. Anyway, enough of the talk, let's do the problem. I'm going to reproduce the picture exactly the way it appears in the exam, as always. We are told that this angle right here is Z. We are told that this angle right here is X. And we are told that this angle right here is Y is y. Let's make it a little bit bigger. This angle right here is x degrees, this angle right here is z degrees, this angle right here we are told is y degrees. And what we are being asked to compare, what we are being asked to compare 
in column A, we have v minus x, and in column B, we have y. z minus x versus y, I'm going to give you 5 seconds to pause and unpause the video, to be able to pause and unpause the video, do the problem yourself as always, and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do in a few seconds time. Okay, here we go. This is x degrees, z degrees, y degrees. Oh, I never give you the percentile. Here we go. Only 30% of people got this question right. 70% of people who took the exam missed this one. Here's what's going on. If this is x degree, if this is x degree, then this angle also would have to be x degrees. They also will also be x degree because these two angles are what is known as vertical angles or opposite angles. And we know opposite angles are equal. So if this is x degree, so is this one. What about this angle right here? Well, if, if this is z, then this angle would have to be 180 minus z. It would have to be 180 minus z. Makes perfect sense because it's a straight line. Because, because this is a straight line. A straight line, of course, has to add up to 180. So this angle plus that angle has to equal 180, of course. So the, if the top angle, if the top portion is z, the bottom portion would have to be whatever is left over from 180. And now, what do we know about the sum of the angles in a triangle? Sum of the angles in a triangle, we know, has to add up to 180. So let's look at this triangle here. Let's give it a name. Let's call this triangle A, B, C. So in triangle, in triangle A, B, C, the three angles, these three angles, have to add up to 180. So angle A, angle A is y degrees plus angle B which is 180 minus 180 minus Z and angle C which is X. Okay? These are these are quantities now, these are numbers, so we don't need a degree sign there. And these three numbers have to add up to 180. Or if you like 180 degrees, same thing. What do we notice? What's the first thing we notice? The first thing we notice is that we have 180 on this side, we have 180 on that side. Why don't we subtract 180 from both sides of the equation? If we subtract 180 from both sides of the equation, the 180 drops out. And what we end up here, what we end up here is that y minus z plus x equals 0. But we are not interested in y minus z plus x equals 0. We want to get the y by itself. How can we get the y by itself? Because that's the column B. If we can get the y by itself, we can figure out, we can understand what y equals. So let's get the y by itself. How do we get y by itself? Well, let's add z to both sides. Let's add z to both sides, and that will get out of this z. This y right here comes down, and let's subtract x from both sides. And that x drops out, and y we find out equals z minus x. z minus x. This is our column A. This is our column B. Column A equals column B. The answer is C. The answer is C. Well, that was the end of our series. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you found it useful. If you need more help, if you need to, if you wish to work with me in person, I'm always available there. That's what I do for a living. I'm a private tutor for GRE, GMAT, SAT, SAT, ACT, TOEFL, IELTS, you name it. And T's. T's is the exam. I don't know why I'm going there. It's not listed there. Uh, but anyway, if you need to get hold of me, uh, send me an email, uh, call me on the toll-free number, call me on 1-800, get hold of me at 1-800-808-PREP, -E 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 get hold of me, send me an email, and I'll do whatever I can to get you ready for the exam, okay? Bye now, and good luck to you.